So tell us a bit more about what wellbeing means to you and to celebrity. Wow, where do we start? I mean, wellbeing from a work point of view, and I know there's been lots of discussion on that, um, I believe this morning, uh, more than ever during the pandemic, has been such a critical side for, for all of us um, as business leaders and within businesses. And from our point of view, it was significant as an industry when we had so many guests to get home from around the world and look after our crew as well. Um, and that really was, it was a very, very tough time. Um, it all happened very quickly. Um, and the well-being of our crew was significant. We've set up a big crew welfare fund um, and because we then had to get them all home and then, of course, we've had to get them all back, which has been, the, which has been great. So, um, and then from an office point of view, just really working with your teams to, to understand uh, the, new, the new norm, whatever that is, and, and how, as I say, it's now living with COVID. Mm. It's no longer uh, pre- and post-COVID. It's, it's how we live with COVID and how we make sure... Uh, that we take a lot, I think, through adversity, we've learned an awful lot. Mm. And I think there's lots of pluses that have come out of this terrible time um, in making us more flexible with our guests, with our consumers and, and with our staff as well. And really, from that point of view, listening to what's important and to make sure, truly making sure when you say, how are you today, uh, that it's a true response that we're wanting back and that we're listening uh, to that response. So... Um, and therefore, I think we, the way in which we've changed the ways of working and the flexibility within that, I think, is, is really, really important, and we're seeing some, some benefit in that. When it comes to on board, um, wellness has always been a massive uh, pillar for us, one of our five key pillars. Uh, and um, as we build our new ships, uh, that, that element is, is even more significant in making sure that, because people, yes, they want to go on, on a cruise and have a wonderful time, but more and more they want to stay fit. So the facilities on board from not just the gyms themselves, but the partnerships that we have, we've got the own, only um, F45 at sea, so you can stay incredibly ah. fit. Oh, all of, you, you don't know F45, April? Come on. <laughs> you look like an F45 girl Bless to me. You for saying that. But so, no. <laughs> all, the, all the equipment keeps you absolutely super fit, but a lot of wellness as well. We've got a partnership with Goop, which is an interesting one. Some people find Gwyneth Paltrow fascinating. <laughs> we won't mention the candles, but that's a very interesting partnership that we have with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. She's actually coming on board and we're running a, a women and wellness uh, cruise, uh, which is uh, selling incredibly well around the Mediterranean next summer on Celebrity Beyond, the, mm. the new ship. Okay. What other elements are there within women and wellness? Well, from a point of view of, of obviously all of the nutrition side, so we have a lot of the experts on, on nutrition. Yeah. From a point of view of all the, all the exercise classes, very much yeah. so as well. Uh, and mindfulness is, you know, is a key side of that. So the, the whole mindfulness the whole and well-being. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. OK. Uh, we heard earlier from um, Philippe, who I believe you know from yes. Forbes Travel Guide. And I also understand you have been working with them too. We talked a lot about hotels earlier. Um, how has that been enhancing what you do at Celebrity with working with um, Forbes Travel Guide? Significantly. Uh, we started the partnership with Forbes um, about just over two years ago, so pre-pandemic. -pre mm -hmm. um, in fact, three years ago now. Um, and actually throughout the pandemic, uh, Philippe's team have been on board the ships whilst we've been bringing the crew back. It's core cool to us from a, from a service point of view. I think one of the big myths is that the cruise industry cannot have large ships and be luxury. Uh, people get it in hotels, they absolutely do. They understand large hotel concepts and understand that they are going to offer luxury in every sense of the word to their consumers. Ships do it as well. And yes, there are ultra luxury ships. We've got our wonderful sister brand, Silver Sea, and they offer an incredible uh, holiday proposition to our guests but it's it's fact you can have a large property and offer mm. a luxurious incredible service and one of the key things with working with Forbes and actually I, I had a quick chat with Philippe before he left and he said it's because of working with celebrity that they are now introducing the accreditation for ships as well mm. because when he came on board Celebrity Edge the new series that we've recently brought out uh, one of uh, five ships that we'll be bringing out in the Edge series, he truly experienced everything coming together. And a big part of that was the service element. And the, a lot of the feedback that we get is how, you know, when you're training so many crew, it's, and from, we have over 60 different nationalities yeah. on board our ships at any one time, working together. 
um, as we do with a complete mix of nationalities of guests as well. So it's really important understanding that intuition of different cultures and what different cultures expect from service. But the feedback that we always get is the authenticity of the crew. And that's a real mantra that we have in making sure that they're knowledgeable, but it's personalised and it's authentic. Yeah. And that's something that uh, Philippe and the team have worked with us a lot and will continue to do. Yeah, excellent. Now, you, you mentioned Edge Class, obviously, and you're already on a huge growth trajectory um, before the pandemic um, took hold. But what has this pause kind of given you a chance to do? And like many companies, I know you've not been sitting still. There's been lots going on behind the scenes while ships were not able to sail, and probably yeah. there always is. Um, you've continued on this journey with luxury branding, the company luxury branding, mm -hmm. not just the words luxury yeah. branding, to keep positioning celebrity in that luxury um, segment. And yeah. I think you said to me, to not, you know, to, to own it more, to not feel like it's something you can't talk about being, you know, you are a luxury brand and not, you know, to take ownership of it, not be shy of saying it kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But mind you, I've never been shy of saying it. It's, it's <laughs> other, saying anything, queering yeah. me on it, but it's, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I passionally believe in, 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 in what we do. Yeah. Another partnership we formed is with Pierre Schmidt from Luxury Branding and his team to really use this time whilst we unfortunately weren't sailing to really say when we come out of this from an evolution from a brand point of view, and again, we started this work pre-pandemic, in some ways it gave us some more time to, to actually work on it during the pandemic. And how do we position ourselves and who are we really targeting to really understand the consumers? We did an awful lot of consumer research as to what was important to them. And how do we actually then work in, in what we say is building more self-esteem yeah. in attracting and making better friends and working with many of our travel partners who are in this room today and also other travel partners in truly understanding what's important to them in making people understand that Celebrity Cruises is a luxury brand. Mm. And we did a lot of research with our travel partners as well, and they gave us a lot of good feedback. So, for example, we set up a concierge team within the contact centre just for our high-value trade partners, no IVRs, etc., so they can get straight through to them. One of the things that they said is important to them is actually we want to acknowledge our guests, and therefore we, we've um, set up a first in the cruise industry whereby our high-value tra tra trade partners can give a guest gift to their guests when they travel with celebrity. Yeah. Um, so we've really listened to both our trade partners and to our guests as well in our positioning. Um, and as what we say is becoming really more and more of a new luxury brand, behaving like that uh, as well in, in, in everything that we do. And part of that was going to our always included proposition. So that was something that everybody said was really important. It's so confusing in the cruise mm. industry as to what is and isn't included. So every guest, every room, every sailing, yeah. we've gone to an all, always included proposition. And so when everyone boards, you can just glide around, giving everyone a drink at the bar if you're the guest. Correct. And no one Absolutely. has to worry about Far easier. up the Far easier. tab and all that kind of thing. Now, we saw with Johnny's um, session earlier, um, the new campaign, um, Journey Safe, Journey Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and it's a huge campaign for you, isn't it? I mean, it's one of the... One of the biggest, I think, you've kind of... You From know, an investment point of view, yes. It's the, it's the, that, that also came out of yeah. uh, our positioning and, and, again, doing the research that we did with consumers and trade. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the term journey safe. Yeah. Um, and we felt it was still very appropriate because at the end of the day, again, in the research that we've done, our guests and our traders said, actually, safety is really important still. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of our guests and crew are vaccinated on board mm -hmm. uh, 100 percent, apart from children under the age of, of 12. But we limit the capacity on that because we really want to make sure it's as safe an environment as possible. And ultimately, that was the number one thing that mm -hmm. consumers said, both current, our current guests and also future cruisers as well. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, so Journey Safe and Journey Wonderful with a double L. Double L. Um, and hopefully the music as well. So we want to really start to try to own that space. Yeah, and I made a note here that um, when I first came out, it said it aims to tear up every cliche and stereotype that exists about cruising, because there are still a lot. And I suppose it's again, again about placing cruising just as any other, not any other holiday, but just in that same conversation. The best, and not the best holiday. The best holiday. <laughs> And just not seeing it as something out on its own, like it's part of the whole travel. Mix. Yeah, and I think, I think what's really important, just as it is with any brand, it's understanding the, the, the differences and what the brand stands for. Mm. 
And again, it's a, a challenge that the cruise industry has more than the hotel industry. In, when you mention hotel brands, people have an immediate, in their minds, they can build a picture very often. Mm. Whereas very often with a lot of cruise brands, people can't. Mm. And, um, and that's why it's important that people understand, you know, there is a cruise for everybody out there. We always say that, there absolutely is. And it's important to understand what we, what we stand for. And, and a big part for celebrity cruises, uh, first was the modernity and the style and the design and the, the designers that we have on board, uh, such as Kelly Hoppen, um, Patricia Urquiola, you know, designers who've never done cruise ships mm. before. Um, and that was a key part of our philosophy in, in when we started building the ships. And then our whole approach to who we attract on board. We're, we're very clear that if people only want to mix with one nationality or only want to mix with one type of person, uh, then Celebrity Cruises isn't for them. You know, we pride ourselves in diversity and inclusion. Uh, it means a lot to us and we want all of our guests, who are, whoever they are, wherever they come from, uh, to truly know that they are treated the same as everybody else. And we absolutely embrace that, uh, mm. as, you, as you know, within our, within our crew as well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this year we had, I didn't do it all myself, I have to confess, sailcations. Um, obviously. Seacations. Seacations, sorry. So you can tell I didn't do one. <laughs> seacations. Um, you missed out. I know. Missed out. <laughs> Too busy checking out country house hotels, people would tell me. Um, now, this was obviously something that all cruise lines had to well, didn't have to, but felt it would be a good idea to get people on board sailing around the UK. How did it work for you? Did it bring the brand to life for people who perhaps hadn't experienced it before? Was it existing customers who popped on for a few days and sailed around? What was, what was the seacation vibe about for Celebrity over the summer? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was incredible to think that um, 21 ships were sailing around the British Isles from Disney. Um, all the way through to Saga holidays. Therein lies a big breadth of different <laughs> yeah. kinds of holidays. Um, and I don't think any of us believed it would be as successful as it was um, for, for all of us. We had over 100,000 guests uh, sailing around the UK um, this summer on all the, the different brands mm. uh, combined. And I've, for all of us, it, as I said, it was a success. Personally, I went on board to 10 friends who'd never cruised before. Um, and they, they couldn't believe it. So first of all, the ship in its own right is such a great destination, but secondly, our own British Isles, which, which we all have got to enjoy more and realise the, the, the joy of that. Mm. Um, and again, it attracted a lot of new to cruise because, uh, because of the, 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 unfortunately, we weren't able to travel overseas. Mm. So we did get, all of us got, uh, int were able to introduce cruising to a lot of people who haven't cruised before and uh, all of whom not all of whom of course there'll be some people but the majority of whom mm. will, will come back again mm. and how's it looking now where where are the ships what's happening what's well we're back we we're back up? we are back we've got eight of 14 ships wow. for celebrity cruises back sailing we're going to have 10 uh, by the end of the year and all 14 will be back uh, by q2 next year um, uh, all of our brands, Silver Sea and Royal Caribbean and ourselves, we're all working diligently mm. to get the ships back. We've had a great season in Athens with Celebrity Apex um, this summer, which was a great... We've also had a brilliant opportunity to get to showcase the ships as much as possible with our trade partners and influencers and media. Um, and that's been really successful as well. Mm. So, yeah, listen, the industry's back. We're offering safe holidays um, and that's the feedback that we're getting. And we're now, you know, we're going to be back in, back in Alaska. We're going to be in the Mediterranean. Asia, as Philip, Philip said, is, is tougher at the moment. Australia, New Zealand, obviously. Um, but yeah, bit by bit, 2022 is coming back and demand is good. Demand is strong for 22 and especially further out for 23 as well. The cruise industry books far out and that's yeah. great news for all of us. Now, changing direction a little bit, um, trying to tie in with our session this afternoon, one of the other key factors we know is always important for luxury travellers is art. And mm -hmm. we have a session with our art curation um, company later and cuisine. It's obviously always very important um, for customers. What have you been doing with Edge Series when it comes to cuisine? I've seen some great names and concepts kind of flowing in. And how important is art when um, on, on board ships as well? Well, but both. I mean, cuisine is, is one of our, our key pillars. We have our own Michelin star uh, chef, Cornelius Gallagher, who's our executive chef. Um, and we've just set up a partnership with Daniel Ballou, mm -hmm. again, which we set up pre-pandemic, but he's now opening his first restaurant at sea, Le Voyage, 
on Celebrity Beyond when she comes out in April next year. She's going to be sailing from Southampton to start with before she goes to the Mediterranean, Rome and Barcelona. So hopefully we'll get as many of our partners on board uh, as we can. So all of our, you know, we have over 29 different restaurants on board, for example, mm. on, on the uh, restaurants and, and um, bar areas on board the Edge series. All very, very different. Mm. So it's a major, major, and really, really, Philippe will tell you myself, really, really good cuisine. And the art, again, art's always been a big part of, for us, but on the Edge series, we've got over 4,000 4, different pieces on Apex, for example. Mm. Um, and incredible, incredible art, artists and sculpt, sculptures as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, really important. And we do art tours on board, yeah. not just the art... Um, that we sell, but literally art tours, just appreciating the, the design. Yeah. 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 Uh, now, I know a big um, thing, thing, issue, area, um, has always been diversity. You mentioned it um, earlier on. And we've had so much talk in the past 18, 20 months about how we need to be um, addressing diversity a lot more for various things that have happened. And I know you picked up our LGBT Trailblazer Award recently at the Travel Industry um, Awards. Can you tell us what diversity and inclusion means um, for, for celebrity and how you're kind of leading the way when it comes to that field? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, it's within our DNA and, and genuinely always has been. Um, you don't get from 2% to 28% female officers on board without making a significant, significant programme to achieve that. And it's, uh, I, ha I would have to say it's our male allies in the organisation that, that get us there. And we have an incredible marine team who've worked diligently to make sure from a recruitment point of view, from a cadet point of view, is that we're looking for gender balance. Um, also that, that we're looking for ethnicity balance as well. Uh, we are still far too white as an industry and, and that is the reality, certainly in, in leadership positions. So we have a programme that really makes sure that in our induction, in our recruitment, that it re we really truly are giving equal opportunities. Mm. Um, and you also need to make sure that as you're making that change, from a diversity inclusion point of view, that everybody understands it and everybody is embracing it. And if people aren't embracing it, then you need to act upon that. Mm. Um, and as we've changed the dynamics on the bridge of the ship, uh, we've gone through some changes from that point of view, mm. uh, but we've really seen the benefits of it all round. And again, I'd just like to say, you know, massive kudos to all of our male allies that have really, really helped us there on the gender equality, uh, on the LGBT equality that's always been core part of our organisation. Uh, I'm proud to work for a company as a gay woman that promotes and embraces uh, that equality so much. Um, and throughout the organisation, it's, it's, it's paramount to us. We have our employed resource groups um, and they, make a, they bring forward and make a lot of change within our organisation. Mm. Okay, and Captain Kate has some big news, I think. She's Captain Kate, first uh, yeah, American female, uh, is going to be the captain of Celebrity Beyond. Yeah. So first time a female has brought out a brand new ship. So, um, and yeah, she's going to be bringing it out of Southampton in, uh, in April. I so look forward to meeting her maybe down she there is, one yes, day. She is, yes. 2.9 views on TikTok. If, if ever there's social media that works, she's quite amazing on Instagram or, or TikTok. She's a, a brilliant brand ambassador. There's a dynamic. Her cat alone has got 25,000 followers on Twitter. Oh my God. <laughs> called, called Bug Naked. She, she's a remarkable, remarkable Ballman. captain. Yeah. yeah. And um, I also want to talk to you about sustainability. Uh, it's also become really clear of conversations we've had yep. this morning and generally speaking during this time and, and onwards that we do need to keep pushing in sustainability. We need to have not just goals but actions and to keep things moving in the direction they should do. Also to be paying heed to communities that we visit much more, ensuring our tourism dollars go further where they need to. What kind of projects is Celebrity working on at the moment in terms of sustainability projects, involvement? What, what's the latest from you? Well, I think this is another area as well, actually, that as a sector of the industry, there is so much that we do do working together is clear. So $19.5 billion has been invested in new technologies on board cruise ships. So as an industry, again, we are, we are so focused on work, walk, working together to make sure that we leave a better footprint uh, on the world overall. From a Royal Caribbean group point of view, that's we, we work very much collectively there. I mean, from our point of view, we had a sustainability programme that started in 1992. Mm. 
with Save the Waves, long before it was ever even a topic of discussion. So again, it's something that's always been caught, caught to us. You know, the oceans are our livelihood. Mm. So we are doing numerous different projects now and looking at reducing our emissions. Uh, we have a partnership with World Wild Wildlife Fund. They don't form partnerships easily. There's a real due diligence process in the companies that they form partnerships with. And they formed a partnership with Royal Caribbean Group five years ago. We're just coming up to our fifth year now. We had to set key targets with them in reduction of emissions, reductions of plastics. We've reduced that by 60% throughout the whole of our, our fleet. We've reduced the emissions by 35% and we've committed to another 25% by 2025. Mm -hmm. We've got environmental officers on board all of the ships. We've got our Go, Go Green programme, which is really an education. We encourage our guests to actually come down and see what we do do mm. from an environmental point of view. Mm. And that all of our ships are equipped with 100% with landfill free space. So it's absolutely cautious. Is there a lot to do? Yes, there is an awful lot to do. Mm. But as an industry, I'm really proud of what we do together uh, to really make sure that we are really playing our part and lots of different projects that we have with a lot of the islands in the Caribbean mm. um, in, in, in offsetting our, our footprint as well. So lots, 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 lots that is happening and lots, lots more to come. Excellent. Now, we've come to the end of the session. As ever, it always goes far too quickly. Um, tell us very quickly what's next on the horizon, what does the rest of this year bring? Not with much left of it, but... Yeah. And what's the big, you know, what's going to get us through to 22 for you? What's the big story? Well, I think, listen, I think the great news is we're now start. we're back. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the reality. We are back. And we should be proud about that. I think we should take with us the, the good things that we've learned during this time how we can work better together, how we can really care for one another more, how we can think and take with us the benefits of what we have learned on the dreaded Zoom um, <laughs> and the mix of, of, of that together as we get back face to face. The industry is investing massively. We've got 14 ships on order as a group, Royal Caribbean group, which is still coming down, down the line. We're working together from a sustainability point of view. We've got an awful lot to do on DNI. I think kudos to TTG and everything that you're doing with your fairer, smarter, better. I think it's so important as an industry, we've still got a long way to go. But the future is bright. It's not orange, the future is bright. <laughs> Who's old and, enough to uh, remember what that means? <laughs> <laughs> not many, yeah. Um, and I'm really excited about it. And we'll see you on uh, Celebrity Cruise, on I Celebrity are, Beyond captain. with the captain, Captain Kate. <laughs> so thank All right. you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Day.